to see every one of you. And don't we just love Jesse and Forrest? Come on, let's give it up for Jesse and Forrest. I'm telling you. They are the greatest and we love them so much. And what an incredible report from last year's missions team. I mean, incredible stuff that was happening. That church was blessed. And then 30 people gave their heart to the Lord as a result of that team. Come on, that is awesome. And that's the kind of stuff that happens when we go all in. In fact, that's what we've been talking about in this last few weeks. It's our 2020 all in campaign. And we've just been talking about what it looks like to be all in with God. So how many just, everybody just look at your neighbor, just tell them, come on, I'm all in. Come on, just tell them, I'm all in. And then one of the areas where people are really all in is this time of year, because how many know it's Christmas time, y'all? How many are excited about Christmas? Raise your hand. Let me just hear you, a few of you. How many of you are people that are like, man, Christmas time, I'm all in on that. It's the music, it's the decorations, it's the, you know, it's the Christmas cookies or whatever it is, like all the stuff about Christmas. And man, I'm telling you, People are more all in this time of year than ever before. And so we decided here at LifeGate that this year, especially in 2020, because we need it more than ever before, that we're going all in for Christmas, y'all. And I'm just excited because we are only two Sundays away. Two weeks from today is our LifeGate family Christmas. Come on, who's pumped up for that? I am. I'm excited. And this year, I'm just telling you, like, we are over the top with the stuff that we've got planned this year for our LG family Christmas. We're going to have our traditional candlelight service and Christmas music and fun stuff for the kids, a great Christmas message, all of those things. But here's what we've decided to do. Just go over the top to make this an outreach for people in our community, your neighbors, your friends, people that are in your family, people that you know that wouldn't go to church any other time of year. How you know people will go to church on Christmas and Easter that wouldn't go at any other time right and so what we're challenging you to do is just invite them and here's the thing is we're trying to make that easy for you and we want it to be fun and special for you but also fun and special for your friends that you invite invite with you so this year I mean every year we have Santa but this year Santa is actually going to bring his sleigh with some real live reindeer y'all I'm telling you for all of you to get your Instagram pictures with your kids and all that kind of stuff up, that's just there for you. And then this year, no matter what the weather is like, two Sundays from today, here's what I know. The forecast is for snow right here at LifeGate Church because we've got real snow that's going to be here. It might be 70 outside, but it's going to be snowy, right? And we're going to have that for the kids to make snowmen and play in and all that kind of stuff. And then I'm so pumped, y'all, because I just found out this last week that this is a done deal. This is going to happen. We're going to have a petting zoo for you guys, for all the kids. And in in the petting zoo, we're going to have alpacas. Come on, anybody know what an alpaca is? And I'm so excited about that. It's going to be so much fun. And we're doing this so that you can invite somebody. So here's what I want you to do. We want to make this easy for you right now. Everybody get your phone out. Come on, get your phone out. Go to Facebook. On Facebook, you can do it even right now in the sermon. Come on. On Facebook, we created an event for the LifeGate family Christmas. Just get on there and share it right now. Just share it on your page. Maybe tag somebody that you want to invite them begin praying for them and then follow up with them and invite them to be with us two Sundays from today. How many would do that? Come on. How many will help me? I'm feeling really all alone up here today. Come on. How many would help me on that? Come on. You can do that. You can. I know why you're not raising your hand because you're doing it on your phone right now. All right. Good job. And why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? Because here's the deal is that we are called. Everybody say, I am called. I'm called. That's what we have discovered in this series is that calling is not just for the pastor. It's not just for the pastoral staff and team. That calling is for every single one of us as followers of Jesus Christ, that God has called us to live an all in life, to give all that we have towards the things that he has called us to do. And in this series, what we've been doing is we've just been learning a few of the basic callings that God has for us as believers. We talked one week about how we are called to be grateful. We learned that there are some incredible benefits to that in our own lives as we express our gratitude. Then last week, we talked about this basic fundamental calling that we are called together, together, that what we are doing right now, those in the room and those that are joining us together online, 
like that is the basic calling that God's people are called to be together, to worship him, that he said when two or three gather in his name that he is there among them. So we learned about that last week. Now today, we're going to learn another very basic kind of fundamental calling that every one of us as followers of Jesus have in our lives. And we're going to learn that we are called to, are you ready for this? We are called to give. We are called to be givers. Now, I know some of you are getting a little nervous when I say that right now. In fact, some of you are going, oh, no, he told us this sermon about giving was coming, but I didn't know it was today. Some of you even nudging your wife and going, hey, let's pretend like we're going to the bathroom and let's leave and come back at another time because this is an uncomfortable subject. In fact, some of you are like, man, I finally got up the nerve to invite that friend to church and I invited him today. And now the pastor's talking about tithing. You could have told us I could have invited him next week. And the truth is, like, this is this subject of giving. It's uncomfortable, isn't it, to talk about? It's not anybody's favorite sermon series of the year. And yet, here's the deal is that God has called us to it. And I want to talk about it for just a minute today. In fact, I just really want to, I want to break this idea of being called to be givers. I kind of want to break it down into three thoughts. And the first one is simply this. If you're taking notes, write it down. That giving is a hard thing. How many would agree with me on that? Like, when you talk about giving of your finances, when you talk about bringing 10% of your income and giving it to God, like it's an uncomfortable, it's a difficult thing to talk about. It's a difficult thing. And I know a lot of people don't like these sermons. Well, if you don't like it, imagine how I feel. <laughs> like it's not the most comfortable thing for me to talk about to you as well. I mean, it's just true. Like when you start talking about money, people start acting funny. I mean, it just really is. Like people get frustrated. People get, you know, people go, oh man, he's talking about money. I, I'll come back later or I'll go to another church because all that church ever does is talk about how they want your money and all of those kind of things. And it's a, it's a hard subject to talk about. And why is it such a hard thing? Well, I'll tell you why I think it's such a hard thing. And that is this, because number two is this, is that it really comes down to a heart thing. Why is giving a hard thing? Because it really exposes what's happening in our hearts. In fact, the truth is, is that when we talk about giving, our attitude towards giving is really, it exposes the things that we, that we really love. And when you really love something, guess what? Don't you want to give towards it? I mean, you've heard me say this many times before, but giving and loving, they're connected. They go hand in hand. Like, like you can give something without loving somebody, but you can't love something without wanting to give towards it. In fact, let me say it like this. Giving, our heart towards giving, really, here's what it is. It is the proof of our love. Think about this for a minute. Think about how God loved us. How did he prove that he loved us? He didn't just say, I love you. What did he do? He proved it in that he gave us the best that he had. In fact, look what, look what Paul says about it in the book of Romans. Romans chapter 5 and verse 8. Look what he says. He says, and God did what? He, everybody say this word aloud. He said, he proves his love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died. Here's the deal is that Paul is saying, hey, how did God show us that he loved us? He showed us that he loved us by giving us his son. I mean, we all know it. John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he what? That he, he gave. Those two things go hand in hand. And it's not just that God loved us so that he gave, but in turn for that, our proof that God has our heart, our proof of our love to God is also proven in that we would give back to him. In fact, check out what Paul says about it in this passage in 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse number 8. Look what he says to the church of Corinth. He says, since you excel in so many ways, in your faith and in your gifted speakers, in your knowledge, in your enthusiasm, and in your love for us, I want you to also excel in the gracious act of what? Of giving. And then notice what he says. 
I'm not commanding you to do this, but instead I am testing how genuine your love is by comparing it with the eagerness of the other churches. What is Paul saying? Paul's saying, hey, you've been excellent in all of these other things. But here's the real proof of where your heart is. Here's how you test your love for God. It's in this area of giving. See, giving, the reason that it's a hard thing to hear about and a hard thing to talk about is because it's really an exposure of where our heart is. Like, what do we love and who do we love? And I know some people, you know, in fact, when I talk about tithing or I talk about giving, almost every time I'm going to have somebody who's going to say, but, you know, pastor, isn't that tithing thing, like, isn't that Old Testament, you know, isn't that like, that's the law, you know, and we're not in the Old Testament anymore. I mean, we're, we're, we're in the days of grace. Come on. How many are thankful for grace? Come on. Isn't that right? We live in the days of grace. And so we don't have to abide by the commands because those are the Old Testament law and all that. And you know what my answer to that is? Almost every time I'll just say, yep, absolutely. That's true. We live in the days of grace. I'm thankful for grace, Right. And yet here's the thing is that Jesus didn't come to abolish all of the old commandments and all of the law. When he came, here's what he did. He didn't get rid of the law. He just changed the motivation behind the law. That it wasn't like he came and said, okay, now you don't need to obey my commandments anymore. No, now he came and said, here's how you obey my commandments. You obey them not because you have to, but because you want to. You obey them, not because you are commanded to do something, but because you are compelled by your love for God to obey what he says. I mean, think about this, all right? I love my wife. Come on, how many love Pastor Amber? Isn't she amazing? Come on, I love her. She's sitting right over here listening and amen, and come on, I love that. And I I love her so much that, you know, the truth is there is a Bible commandment that says in the Old Testament, do not commit adultery. And so I love my wife, and so I don't commit adultery. But the truth is, I don't not commit adultery because there is a commandment that says don't commit adultery, right? I'm not like, babe, you know, I'd cheat on you, but the Bible says for me not to do that, and that's the reason I'm not doing it. That's not how it goes, right? Why am I faithful to my wife? Why? Because I love her. There's a different motivation behind the commandment than just doing what the commandment says. It's motivated not by law, but by love. And when Jesus says, hey, I want you to, I want you to give, you are called to give, there's a difference in I'm doing it because I have to and I'm doing it because I want to. In fact, Jesus said it like this. Check this out. He said, if you love me, you will what? You will obey my commandments. See, giving is a hard thing. And the reason it's a hard thing is because it's really, it's a heart thing. It's about what's happening in my heart. But then when I start to understand that, man, this is a heart thing. This exposes where my true love really lies. Then I can begin to move to a whole different level, which is my third thought, is that giving actually then, when I understand that it's a heart thing, here's what it does. It becomes an honor thing. That when I give, what I'm actually doing is I'm saying to God, God, you have my heart, so here's what I want to do. I want to honor you. In fact, how many of you, how many of you want to honor God with your life? Come on, all over this place. Yeah, if we love God, then don't we want to honor him with every part of our life? And this is what the scripture talks about. Check it out in Proverbs. I want us to camp out here for just a minute. Proverbs chapter three and verse number nine. I want you to notice what it says. It says that we should, what? Honor the Lord with our wealth and with the first fruit of our crops. So the Bible's teaching us that there is a way that we honor God. How do, we, how do we really honor God? Well, I'll just break it down for you. If you're taking notes, write it down. Here's how you honor God. You honor God by giving him what he wants, when he wants it, and how he wants it. You honor God by giving him what he wants, when he wants it, 
and how he wants it. Now, let's think of it like this. How many, how many parents do we have in the room today? Parents, raise your hand all over. Okay. How many of you moms and dads like it when your children honor you? Come on, right? In fact, let me just help all the parents out here today. Guys that are kids and stuff, let me just tell you, there is a Bible commandment that says, honor your father and mother in the Lord for this is right. All the parents look at your kids and say, this is right. Come on, this is right. Honor your parents. Now, think about this. I'm a dad, got two teenagers, also have an almost five-year-old, got a pretty good gap there, right? And, and here's the deal. I love when they honor me. Now, how do they honor me? Well, they honor me like this. When they, when they do what I want them to do, when I want them to do it, and how I want them to do it. They're sitting right over here. I hope they're listening really well today. I mean, let's just think about this. Okay, let's say that I, I want my children to clean up their room. Now, here's the thing. It's not enough for them to know that that's what I want them to do. They also have to do it in order to honor me, right? But even if they do it, it's not enough if they just do it, if they don't also do it when I want and how I want. Let's say I say, hey, I want you to clean up your room and I want you to do it today before we leave for worship tonight at five. In fact, there's worship tonight at five, right? Let's say we go home today and I say, I want you to clean up your room and I want you to do it before we leave for worship tonight. How many know that if they clean up their room, but they don't do it before we leave for worship, they still didn't honor me? Or how about this? If I say, I want you to clean up your room, do it before we go tonight and they clean it up and they get it all done before we leave for worship night tonight, but their attitude's terrible the whole time they're doing it. And they're stomping around and banging stuff and slamming doors and grumbling and complaining. How many know they may have done what I wanted them to do when I wanted them to do it, but they didn't do it how I would want them to do it and so still have not honored me, right? Come on, right? So it's not enough to just know what I want them to do. They have to actually do it. It's not enough to just do what I want them to do in order to honor me. They have to do it when I want them to do it and how I want them to do it. And it's the same way in our relationship with God. How do we honor God? It's not enough to just know that the word of God says that we should bring to him the first 10% of our income. It's not enough to just know that we are called to be generous and called to be givers. We have to actually do it, but not just do it, but do it when he wants it and how he wants it. And when we do that, then what happens is we bring honor to our father. So let's break it down for just a minute. How, how do we do this? What does God want? If you're taking notes, write it down. I'll tell you, here's what he wants. You ready? He just wants everything. <laughs> Not a lot, just everything. In fact, check out what it says in this passage. It says that we should honor the Lord with our wealth. Now, some of you are going, okay, cool. Like I'm exempt because I ain't wealthy, you know? <laughs> but the truth is, first of all, let me just tell you this. You are wealthy, whether you realize it or not. In fact, today, let me just give you a little statistic to give you some perspective. If you make more than $35,000 a year, did you know you are actually in the top 4% of all wage earners in the world? You're wealthy, right? But that's not exactly what it's talking about. Honor God with your wealth. You know what it's really talking about? It's talking about everything that you have. That would be your wealth, everything you have. In fact, the message version of, of the Bible says it like this, honor God with everything everything. What does that mean? What's everything? Everything. All that you got, 100%. I, I think sometimes those of us that have been in church for a long time, we get kind of full of pride and go, well, I give my tithe. And we hear a message like this and we're like, yeah, praise the Lord, pastor. You know, I love it when you talk about tithing because I'm already doing it, right? And we get kind of proud of that. But you know what? 10% and everything, there's a pretty big gap there, right? Like it's not just 10%, it's not just tithe. That's just where it starts. Like honor me with everything. And those people that go, oh, well, that's Old Testament too. Okay, you wanna be New Testament? You know what they did? Everybody brought everything to the church and then just distributed it to whoever had need. Come on, you wanna do New Testament stuff, right? What does God want? Everything, your whole life. This is what we've been talking about in this series, all in. Not part of me, not 10% of my heart and soul, 10% of my mind, 10% of my strength. No, all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. What does God want? Everything, all of it. Okay, well, that's a lot, but like, when does he want it? I got to make sure I figure out I do this in the right time. Well, here's, are you ready for this? When does he want it? First. Everybody say first. First. 
Notice what he says. He says, honor the Lord with your wealth and with the what? With the first fruits of all your crops. What is he basically saying? He's saying, God doesn't just want all of you. He wants to be first in your life. He wants to be priority. He wants to be number one. And here's the problem is that there can only be one number one. There can only be one priority. In fact, did you know that the word priority, actually it was only, it's only been in about the last hundred years that we actually made that word plural. Now we say priorities, but up until that time, we wouldn't say priorities because that's the nature of that word. A priority is that you can't have priorities. You only have priority. You can't have two number ones. I know we try to do that. We're like, okay, well, we just won't have a champion. We'll have a co-champion or we'll just give everybody, you know, a trophy and we won't keep score. And guess what? Even when you do that, everybody knows who won. Come on, parents, you know what I'm saying? And this is what we try to do in life. We try to have more than one priority, more than one number one. But deep down in our heart, we know and everybody else knows what the true priority of our heart is. In fact, that's what Jesus was talking about. Check out this passage in Matthew 6, verse 24. He says, no one can serve what? Two masters. What does he say? He's saying you can't have two priorities. You can't have two number ones. There can only be one number one. No one can serve two masters. And he says, if you try, this is what will happen. You will love one and hate the other. Or you will be devoted to one and despise the other. And then he goes, in case you're not getting what I'm talking about, let me be real specific. You can't love both God and money. In other words, he goes, here's the deal. I know that there's, there can only be one number one in your life. And the thing that wants to compete for your number one more than anything else is your money. So he says, hey, you can't serve both God and money. Because here's the thing, God wants everything. And when does he want it? first. And how does he want it? Well, check out what the scripture says about it in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 7. For each one of you should give what you've decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves what? A cheerful giver. How does God want it? He wants it from the heart. He doesn't want us to give him everything and do it first out of like, I have to do this. He wants us to do it out of, I want to, because I love him so much, because he's done so much for me. He wants us to give cheerfully. Now, when I read that scripture, I, it reminds me of something my dad used to say whenever I was a kid. He was a pastor, and so growing up, I remember him preaching on that scripture, and he would say it like this. He would say, you know, God loves a cheerful giver, but he'll also take it from a grouch. <laughs> and that might be true, but the thing is, like, if you're giving uh, under compulsion, you're not really honoring God, are you? I mean, if my kids, if I tell them I want you to, to clean up your room and they stomp around and clean up their room, I'll take it. I mean, the room's clean, right? But I'm not gonna feel honored. I'm gonna feel like I might've got their hands, but I don't really have their heart. And when we give because pastor said we're supposed to give or Bible says we're supposed to give or that's just what I'm supposed to do out of compulsion, you know what? God goes, like, I'll take it, I'll use it for my kingdom, but that's not what I want. I don't want your money. What I really want is your heart. I want you to give me everything, and I wanna be first, and I want you to do it with the heart of joy, with the heart of love, with the heart of saying, I want to be generous because God has been so generous to me. And then notice, this is for our benefit. I mean, think about it. If my kids, I say, hey, clean up your room, they clean up your room, and they're not kicking stuff around, but instead they're singing and they're excited and they're giving me hugs and telling me, daddy, I love you, all while they're cleaning up their room. Guess what? When the room's cleaned up, you know what I'm gonna wanna do? I'm gonna wanna put them all in the car and take them out for ice cream. Come on, I'm gonna wanna bless them because they honored me and it's the same way with God guys when we honor God like this by saying God I'm going to give you what is yours I'm going to give you everything you're going to be first in my life and I'm going to do it lovingly and and want I'm going to do it because I want to and do it joyfully then God goes oh man I am so honored look at my child down there that loves me so much now let me pour out blessings upon their lives because they honored me in such a great way it's for our benefit guys when I preach a sermon like this it's uncomfortable for you it's uncomfortable for me, but you know what? I've become okay with the discomfort. 
You know why? Because I, I figured this out a few years ago. When I preach a sermon like this, it's not because I'm trying to get money from you. It's because I'm trying to get blessings to you. It's for your benefit. When you come to a place and say, man, I know it's hard, but I want God to have my heart. And when he has all of my heart, then man, everything that I have, my whole life is going to be used to honor him. And that's what All In is all about. That's what we challenge everybody to do. Just say, God, I want to go all in with you. So what does that look like? All our hearts and souls. Like investing all of our hearts in the things of God. And the things that last. If there's one thing that we've learned this year, is there are a lot of things that do not last. But there's one thing that does. When we invest in the eternal, when we invest in the kingdom of God. And here's what I know. Everybody's invested in something. True? Come on, everybody's putting their heart and soul. Everybody's putting their finances in something. And here's what I know about it. Like when you invest in something, the more you invest in it, the more it gets your heart, the more it gets your attention, the more it gets your focus. Come on, right? In fact, I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about my lovely wife that's sitting over here. And when we, were, when we were in the quarantine time, remember back in March when they did shelter in place and all that kind of stuff. And so we're sitting at home. And so we had this little patio on the back porch, but there was nothing back there. And so during the middle of that, she was like, you know, if we're going to be home a lot, you know, baby, it'd be really nice if we had like if I had like a chair where I could sit out there on the porch and I could drink my coffee and I could, you know, I could have my, read my book and stuff. And so I was like, okay, well, babe, how much is it going to cost? And she showed me one. I was like, well, how about you find one a little cheaper than that? And then it's a, it'll be okay. No, actually, because I love her. I said, get whatever you want, baby, get it. And so she gets a chair and she sat out there for a little while. And then she's like, you know, babe, like, it'd be kind of cool if I had something to put my feet on, you know? And so she's like looking on Amazon. Hey, look at this ottoman. I'm like, okay, go ahead. That sounds good. So then she sits out there, puts her feet up for a little bit. And then, you know, a couple days later, she's like, well, you know, I found this nice swing thing that would look so great out on the porch. And babe, you could put it up for me. She has great trust in her husband. And so I'm like, okay, whatever. I mean, because I love you. Let's, let's just get it. And so then she's got the chair and then she's got the thing to put her feet on. Then she's got the swing to sit on and then she's like, you know, it'd be really nice if we could sit out here as a family and if the girls could sit out with us, we need a couple of more chairs. Like we need patio furniture, babe. And I'm like, okay, whatever. And then it's like, oh no, now we need plants and now we need stuff to hang on the wall. And now, like now we got this big old, like this whole patio out there full of all of this stuff. And what I learned is the more that she invested in the patio, the more she wanted to sit out there. And the more she sat out there, the more she wanted to invest in the patio. And that's the way it works, guys. Like when you invest your heart in something, guess what? It gets your attention. It gets your focus. It gets your time. If you have season passes to your favorite team, guess what? You're going to be at those games because you invested your money in that. If you got a deer lease, guess what? You're not even here this morning because you're out there hunting deer right now because you're investing in that. If you put your money in the stock market, guess what? Every morning you're getting on your phone to see what the stock market is doing. Why? Because you invested something in it. And now it's got your time. Now it's got your focus. Now it's got your attention. And God goes, I want all your heart. So how do we give him all of our heart? We invest in his kingdom. And the more we invest in his kingdom, the more he gets our focus. And the more he gets our focus, the more we're going to want to invest in the kingdom. Until eventually we are honoring him by saying, God, you have all of me, not just parts. That's what all in is all about. All my heart. All my soul. We've been challenging everybody to just say, hey, just step up wherever you're at. If you're not giving anything, give something. If you're giving something, start doing it like every month. If you're doing it every month, then do your tithe. If you're doing your tithe, go above and beyond that. And here's the deal. It's not about, please hear your pastor's heart today. It's not about giving God more money. It's about climbing that ladder of saying, God, I want to give you more of my heart. All my heart and soul. All my mind. What does that mean? Here's what I think it means. I think it means being thoughtful. Everybody say thoughtful. Thoughtful about how we can invest in the kingdom. Most people, when we give, this is how we give. We give spontaneously. You see a need and you go, oh man, there's that homeless person on the side of the road. I'm gonna give something to them. And it's a spontaneous thing. And that's a good thing. That's being, being sensitive to the Holy Spirit as he speaks to you. I think that's a good thing. But I think there's also a, a way that we even honor God more than just giving when we spontaneously see a need. And that is when we plan, when we give thought for how we can give 
God more. In fact, think about it like this. I've used my family as a lot of illustrations this morning, but just a couple weeks ago we had our anniversary. It was our 22nd anniversary. And we went out on a date, but you know what we kind of did is 22nd anniversary. We just kind of go, okay, what do you want to do? Let's go eat and let's do the thing. But how many know a couple of years ago, we had our 20th anniversary and that's a big deal. And so instead of just spontaneously going, hey, let's go out on a date, like we planned for it. In fact, I love my wife whenever I do stuff spontaneous for her. But you know what? She feels that love even more whenever I go, hey, let's have a plan. Let's put it on the calendar. Let's save up towards it. Let's do something special to make this a special day to show each other how much we love each other. And it's the same way with God. We can love him by spontaneously blessing and giving and all that. But, man, we really show him our love when we give thought to, hey, what if I put some aside for all in? What if I worked an extra extra gig on the side a little bit to make a little extra to give into missions and into all in? What if I gave up some things for a little while? How could I think about how I could budget it in strategically so that I could be more all in for the things of God? All my heart and soul, all my mind, all my strength. What does that look like? Hey, if you have a job, you can love God with all your strength. You can use your gifts, your abilities, what you're strong at, what you're good at, you can use it to serve God. What would happen? How would it change our attitude, first of all, if we went to work going, I'm not just coming to work in order to make a paycheck to pay the bills and provide for my family, but instead this work is my ministry. Like I'm going there to make a paycheck so that from that paycheck, then I can invest it in the kingdom of God and do something not just temporal, but something eternal. What could happen, those of you that are business owners here, if you decided, you know, I'm not going to just build a business. I'm going to use that business to build the kingdom. What could happen if we strategically said, you know what, out of my business, I'm going to tithe. Not just personally, but like we're going to put it in the budget, 10% of our budget. We're going to give it to God. We're going we're to seek his kingdom first. Imagine what could happen if we could just be a people who go, man, I know this is a hard thing because it deals with what's happening in my heart. But more than anything, I want to honor God. I want to give him what he has asked for. And I want to do it when he asks for it. And I want to do it the way that he asked for it. I want to do it not out of a law or out of a command, because, but because I am compelled to do it because of my love for him. And it'd be real easy to say, well, Pastor, this is like, we're in the middle of a pandemic. Come on. Like, give us a break this year. But we can't take a break. Why? Because there's still people who are hurting. Because there's still a kingdom that needs to be built. Because there are still missionaries that need to be sent. Because there are still people that need to hear. Because there are still Bibles that need to be translated. Because there are still churches that need to be planted. Because there's still a community right here that needs a life-giving church like LifeGate to make a difference. And it takes every single one of us making an investment into the kingdom. And when we do that, man... That's when God goes, oh, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then, oh, all these other things I can add to you. I can bless you. I can, you give, man, and I'm going to give back to you more. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Honor God with your wealth and then your barns will be filled to overflowing. That's what the scripture says, that the more you give, the more God begins to bring back in your life so that you can then give more to him and we can together honor God. That's what I'm talking about today. That's what all in is all about. And we can't stop giving, guys, because God never stopped giving to us. I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes all over this room. Maybe there are some of you that are here. I know this is, man, this is a tough message. It's a very, this series has been a very pastoral series. And yet some of you, as you're hearing this, even today, you're going, you know, the truth is, God doesn't have all of my heart. I know he's given all for me. But I haven't yet come to that place of giving all to him. But today, pastor, I'm ready. I'm ready to give all. I'm ready to give my life to him as he has given his best for me. I know I'm not where I should be with God. But today I want to be. Pastor, pray with me. If that's you in this room or online, would you just slip up your hand? If you're in the room, you say, I know I'm not where I should be with God, but I want to be. Would you just slip up your hand? I'd love to pray with you all over this place today. If you're online, let us know so that we can pray with you as well. And here's what I want us to do. I want us to stand together. Those of you that are online with us as well in your home, if you can, stand. Let's honor God today. 
I want us to pray this together. Everyone praying, praying aloud with those that are surrendering their life to Jesus today. Dear Jesus, I confess I'm a sinner. I fall short of your righteous standard. But I thank you that you gave your all for me. And now I'm ready to give my life to you. Forgive me of my sins. Be my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, can we just give the Lord an offering of praise for that today? I'd love to just challenge you. Next Sunday, we're going to come. We're going to bring our going to bring our first fruits towards all in. As we close out 2020 and we go into 2021, here's what we're doing. We're putting a seed down in the ground, believing that it's going to be a harvest in our lives and a harvest in our church and our community and in the kingdom of God. And so here's what I'm just challenging you to do. First of all, to go on to the LifeGate app and make your all in commitment for next year. That's your tithe, your offering, like everything that you're going to do for the next year. But then this this coming Sunday, just come with prepared to say, hey, I want to give a little extra. This is the season of giving. I want to plant a seed to, to just believe God for harvest in my life and harvest in the kingdom. And so here's what I would just challenge everyone to do. Would you this week, would you pray? Like, I'm not going to ask you to give. Here's what I'm going to just do is ask you to pray. And when you pray, you know what I believe God's going to do? He's going he's to speak to you about what you are to give. And Pastor Amber and I are already making our commitment of what we're going to do over this next year in 2021. We're going to bring something next week as well. It's just an offering of just saying, God, we're, we're all in. And would you just pray? And as you pray, just listen. God will speak to you. He'll show you. And then as he speaks to you, just go, hey, I want to do what God wants me to do, when he wants me to do it, how he wants me to do it. Because I, I want to use everything that I have to honor God. How many would do that with me this week? How many would just pray, God, what would you have me to give? What would you have me to do? Can we just do this? Can we just lift up our hands to the Lord and just, just as a way of just saying, God, I'm all in. God, I'm all in. I just tell him right now, God, I'm all in. Whatever I have, it's not mine, it's yours. And God, so just with a joyful heart, like it's not something I have to do. I get to do it. God, I bring my sacrifice of praise God, I bring my life to you. I lay it down. I give it to you. Whatever you ask me to do. God, we thank you, Lord. We surrender it to you. In Jesus' name. Come on, can we just give the Lord <laughs> offering? Thank you for joining us online today. Make sure and hit subscribe to this channel and hit the bell for more notifications. We can't wait to engage with you this week.